water safari is dubbed the world's toughest canoe race because it's not just about paddling down the river, it's really the ultimate adventure race. It's about getting yourself, your team, and your boat down the river in one piece <laughs> for 260 miles. And it's not just about paddling. There's 10 portages within the first 24 hours. That means you have to get out of your boat, you've got to drag your boat, you have to get up and over big dams, there's obstacles that you have to get through, you have to overcome sickness, you have to overcome pain, you have to overcome injuries. So it's really, in my opinion, the world's greatest adventure race. He broke his paddle? Yes. He broke his paddle? Yeah. Here, hand him this. My brain cannot comprehend that we just came off the start line. We're not even to the first real portage yet, and we've already broken a paddle. And we only have so many paddles on board, so now all of a sudden, these paddles are so valuable, and we can't let anything happen to any of them, or we're going to be in trouble. My heart is racing, and I'm just thinking all of these thoughts are like flooding my head, like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? All right, we just broke a paddle. My name is Debbie Richardson. I'm an ambassador for the We Will Not Be Tamed campaign, and this year I'm doing the Texas Water Safari for the 12th consecutive time. I'm on a five-person team, Jeff Wiesty, James Green, Zach Elkins, and Joel Truitt. We are the untamed boat number 3737, and that stands for the number of safaris that we had collectively as a team. The Texas Water Safari is a 260-plus mile canoe race, starting in San Marcos, Texas, going to the coast. Teams have 100 hours to complete the race. This year, our team's goal will be to compete in the top 10 with a finish time of 40 hours or less. There are a lot of really, really good teams, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a really tough race for us to try to make top 10. So we started out at the back of the race, and then we were around 10th place by the time we got to the first official checkpoint, which is Staples Dam. We are talking about this 40-foot boat that comes out over the dam, and then it, and then it starts to tilt and then it's coming down. Jeff has the back. It's very dangerous. You have to move quick, but you have to be deliberate. We grab all of our empty jugs and our um, anything that needs to be off-boarded at this point. And then we have two team captains that are designated that are allowed to put new jugs and food bags into the boat. Team members have five jugs, five food bags. It's, it's a frenzy. We're trying to hurry and get through the first checkpoint. There's a lot of boats coming through. You know, we're trying not to lose our position in the race. Like you feel like your muscles are being ripped off of your bones. <laughs> I mean, you experience a pain, a level of being uncomfortable in a way that you've probably never felt or will feel in your entire life. So you have to like really try to rein that in and, and say to yourself, I'm gonna just have this concentrated, focused time where I'm gonna just do nothing but paddle and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to focus on any of the pain or anything negative or anything bad. And we're gonna grab anything that looks like. Right. Uh-oh, so that's your harm show. This is R.D. Kisling. I'm team captain for the Untamed Boat 3737. It's been a fast and furious day, so uh, the river's running fast, the boats are running fast, and we are barely getting from checkpoint to checkpoint and getting the jugs cleaned and the jugs reloaded and ice on and getting the stuff to the team. So it's been literally like jumping and, and hustling all day. So we're hoping for a little break as we get down the river a little bit. So with a five-person team, I know it's really hard for the crew. They have trying to get all of this prep work done. They've got a whole a jug for each person. Sometimes we had two jugs, that's 10 jugs with ice. And it's not just water, everybody's got something different they want in their mix. And it's very stressful for the crew to, to be able to accommodate us. Telling them to go. Okay. Go, go, go. Go. Go, 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 go. Thank you. Y'all are doing awesome. You take your, your everyday 
person, you know, in their work attire, and you transform them into this feral person who's like going through this experience that's like basically just trying to survive. You're scrambling down dams, you're waist deep in mud, you're dragging a boat you know, around dams and through fields. And you're running through the woods at night with nothing but a headlamp and you don't care if there's snakes or spiders or whatever like you're just like we're coming through here and nothing's gonna stop us came to the conclusion that we're not really team captains we're scullery maids <laughs> we've we're short order cooks yes one or the other we do dishes and we take we, orders we plate for meals food. And they're never satisfied with what we give them. <laughs> the mash, we got Joel's mash. They return it. They return it. All yeah, the time. Good. And not as in good condition as we give it to them. <laughs> Alright, we're loading up here. Everything out. Where's James sitting? James going to three. Zach in one. I need to hit. Oh, you guys need to heat him up. What you got? You got your mash? I got my mash, baby. I'm half three. All right, let's go, let's go. Here, uh, uh, ice. Mm. Carrie. That's good. That's good. Hey, Carrie. Good job, guys. 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 Good Harder than I ever envisioned. And He's going back on the boat next year. <laughs> yeah, I am. You're, the thing is, when you're paddling a canoe, you only have one thing to do, and that's paddle a canoe down the river, and, and that's eat. not really that hard. And when you're team captain, you have to function in the real world when you're almost just as tired. We got There's a, candle, a Campbell's. Uh, chicken, oh. chicken stars. Chicken stars. Choking down your food. You're drinking your water out of a tube with a bite valve on it. You're just constantly on the move. You, you feel bad about having to go down to stop paddling, even for a minute or two, to try to take care of yourself because you're very aware of the fact that when you go down, your entire team is pulling your dead weight. Changing up seats, changing up your paddles, changing up your stroke, all of that helps keep you mentally focused, but it's really about whatever keeps the boat moving forward. And it's about whatever keeps everybody engaged together as a team. You're only as fast as your, as your slowest team member. With the water safari being a life lesson for me, it's like learning that you can make you can make a plan, you can envision your plan. Nothing's ever gonna go perfect. It's just the way life is. And it's just a matter of like dealing with it, getting yourself back together and moving on. And that's the beauty of the race. You're alone overnight, you know, and you're like, okay, you know, you're reflecting back on the day, and you're telling stories about, you know, what happened, and, and you're looking at the stars, and, you know, you're just like, you're starting to cool down for the first time, and then about halfway through the night, you're like, oh God, I'm not feeling that great, you know, the soreness starts to set in. Yeah. You guys need this, the bottle? It's such a great race. No, it's a pee bottle. Yeah, I know. Okay. Very familiar. Okay, well, now the help boys are coming. We need to get going. See you guys in Peterson. Thank you. I mean, it's great that we, we placed eighth overall. I, I'm really excited about that. It's great that we finished in 40 hours. The best part is that the team worked really well together. And if you walk away friends, and if you walk away saying, oh, I would do this again, already thinking about next year, like, wow. I mean, you can't have a better experience than that. I know people are wondering, like, why do you do this if you go through this experience and it's nasty, you know, and you have to go through all of these conditions and you have to go through all of this pain and push yourself through all of this. Like, why do you do this? And that's why, because 
what you get when you come out the other side. Once you see, like, I've gone to this really dark place and I come out of it, that's what you get. That's the reward. It's, it's not the patch. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the finish time. It's not the placement, you know. It's the bond that you've created with your team along the way.